Sometimes I find myself knowing that something will take place. He loves God. God does not need our methods to do his purpose. Ian Tlovu is a Balawi based pastor, a trained economist. In February 2008, he relocated from Gwanda to Bulawayo. According to him, it was during this period that God prompted him to establish a church in the Kulumani suburb of the city of Bulawayo. The ministry started as a small prayer group with three people. Since 2008, the ministry has undergone several stages of growth. Glovo is known for his popularity across the country and his online presence with thousands of fans on his Facebook and YouTube. He claims regular occurrences of divine miracles in his church. Followers say Ntlovu is used by the Holy Spirit to speak accurate prophetic words concerning events that affect individuals, communities, churches, and nations. And let us not forget our Zimbabwe as we prepare for elections. The Holy Spirit has already shown us in this place and in other places and through other men and women of God who is going to win. Hallelujah. We already know who is going to win. We already know the outcome. Hallelujah. Just look at your neighbor and say, look at the pastor very well. Yes, when the results are announced, you will remember how I looked like today on the 30th. Isn't it the election will be on the 30th? On the 30th, there is a way I look like. The way I look like mirrors what will happen on the 30th. His call to the pastoral office is a traumatic public proclamation in which he announces his divine commission and thereby commits himself openly to the secret inner compulsion from God. The following is his story. I've got a commission, I was given a commission around 2001-2002 to pray for Zimbabwe and Israel. So when God wants to show me something, he gives me a pattern to pray for a certain issue. So sometimes the pattern remains within me, within my heart, for several days. Uh, the way I can compare how I experience a pattern, I can compare it to how people experience stress in the natural when there is something which is troubling them. The only difference is that I don't feel any pain, any physical pain or any emotional pain. But at a deeper level, there will be like a certain weight that I will be carrying within my heart. Uh, until I pray through that weight, uh, I don't feel relief within myself. So in the process of praying through, Whatever I will be feeling in my heart as a pattern, maybe it's leadership, maybe it's a certain situation, maybe it's weather events or whatever God will be showing me because He shows me by the patterns that I experience in my heart, by the things which come upon my heart. As I pray them through, that's when I start to experience visions. Sometimes when I'm reading the Bible, I experience visions and then I start to write them down. Because initially I didn't write them down, I would forget them. When I try to relate to them, I would be just remembering just a sketchy details. And then later on, the Spirit of God told me, what I show you, you just have to do like what they were doing in the Bible. You have to write down the visions. So that when you are telling people, you are telling them as accurately as I showed you. The same hand which wrote during the time of Daniel, the same hand which wrote Mene Mene Tekele Ufasin is the same hand which is writing the transformation of this nation. So I experience dreams, I experience visions. Sometimes I find myself knowing that something will take place, but I cannot explain how I happen to be knowing or when the knowledge would have arrived. I believe that God has called me for this time in Zimbabwe. I believe that God has placed him for Christian believers, not only for our church, but for many churches, not only in Zimbabwe, but many other countries, because it's not only Zimbabwe that he prophesies about. He sees visions about different countries. So what I can say is that he, he has a burden, not for only for Zimbabwe, but he has a burden for the body of Christ as a whole. Uh, when I was a child, I used to experience dreams, but it was when I was doing primary school, uh, I think around grade six in 1989. 
when I was doing flat six, I had a dream where two engines were standing with me in a river with the three of us, a river which is near our home. But the river looked big in the dream. It was now like a very big river. And then these angels, they positioned me like they want to baptize me. I don't know how I was immersed in water in the dream. And then I came out of the water. But by then now, I was not going to any Christian church because the family where I grew up, they didn't, uh, I mean, follow Christianity. So the thing didn't make a lot of sense to me. I told my grandmother, she was still alive then, I told her that I dreamt angels. I, I, I don't know how I arrived at this knowledge that they were angels, but definitely they didn't look like human beings. They were taller than human beings, shinier than human beings, more beautiful than human beings. They looked also younger than what a young human being would look like, but stronger and imposing with this aura around them. And they didn't say a lot of things, they were just talking to each other. And then I was positioned in the middle. That's, that's the most vivid, uh, that's the most vivid vision that I can remember, that I experienced. Yeah. Some of the people that I'm shown visions about, I don't have a direct way of actually interacting with them or actually telling them what God will be showing me. Because I'm not politically active myself. I just do my academic work and most of the time I'll be doing church work and praying. So I don't have any means because it's not easy to get access to politicians. Father, on bended knee, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. on behalf of this nation, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray for the ego, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. pertaining to the door that you have opened, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. that the ego will not miss its time of visitation. Yes, because those people, they are very busy, and there is protocol which is involved in accessing them. So that's why I've resorted to, to YouTube. You can only create a marriage out of what? Consensus. You first of all must what? Dialogue. YouTube. But when I'm posting those messages on YouTube, I will be actually posting them to conscientize intercessors, fellow intercessors, because there are people that I network with, some who are even in other countries. So we'll be praying for, for these messages. I am here to declare that you love us, Almighty God. That in spite of our pains, in spite of our pains, you love us, Almighty God. So, social networking sites like Facebook and YouTube, they are just a platform for us to communicate with each other. But as for uh, going to the political leadership to give them messages, I've never attempted that. Father, we may not un fully understand everything around our lives, but we acknowledge you as God. But would you attempt to do that if given the chance? Yeah, whenever God shows me something uh, and he actually sends me, because God has to send you to, to, to a political leader. If, if a platform exists and then the Lord sends me to, to speak to them, I would gladly go to them. To, 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 to tell them what God will be telling me. But that depends on two, 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 two situations or two factors. The first factor is that I must actually see something. The second factor is that I must actually be sent to them. Prayer should be uppermost, and then dialogue, and then consensus. There can be no consensus when people have not talked. The ones, the messages that we normally post on YouTube, they will be requiring corporate prayer, prayer. because the prayer, prayers of the local church, they can achieve so much. But when we pray now, Christians of AFM, Christians of 
maybe Roman Catholic Christians of brethren in Christ, Christians of assemblies of God, when we pray collectively as intercessors, we achieve critical mass in the spirit and we are able to achieve so much more. Because the Bible says too, they, they can chase thousands. One can chase his own thousands, but two can chase up to 10,000. That's what scripture says. Because I told you that God has got many means of bringing about his will. We believe that when we mobilize Christians to pray over an issue of national significance, we are highly likely to achieve results. He is a man who really loves God. He really fears the Lord. When God tells him something, whether it hates you, he will have to tell you what God has to say or what God is saying. Even if you are his friend, when it comes to telling you what God is saying, whether you like the truth or you don't like it, he is a man who will tell you the truth. I, I've seen that uh, because of the tramples and the challenges that we've gone through as a nation, many people, they think that God has abandoned Zimbabwe. He doesn't care about Zimbabwe. But what I would want to remind people is that according to the Bible that we read in the book of Genesis, and also in the book of Exodus, even though God loved Israel, he allowed Israel to be in servitude for more than 400 years. Father, we intercede for citizens of this country to rest their confidence in you. Israel was freed from Egypt through the end of Moses, the prophet. After a, a period of bondage of four centuries, so that you are going through Trump, that you are going through trials, it doesn't mean that God has abandoned you. Father, we intercede for each and every Zimbabwean to have peace in their heart. We also see it in the life of Job, the interaction between God in Job chapter 1 and the devil. That God really loved Job, but Job had to be tested. So there is such a thing as a test. I am here to declare that you love us, Almighty God. One of my main motivations for praying for Zimbabwe and for praying for Israel, I believe that there is a very strong connection of a spiritual nature between Zimbabwe and Israel. I may not be able to fully explain what the connection is. But I don't believe it's a coincidence that we've got people who originated from Israel in Zimbabwe. The Varemba people and other people who, who may not know their exact identity that they, they actually originated from Israel as uh, descendants of the tribes uh, of, of Jacob, the tribes of Israel. So I believe that there is this connection between Zimbabwe and Israel. That Zimbabwe is of spiritual significance in Southern Africa, in Africa, and that Zimbabwe is of spiritual significance in the world. As they say in Devele that when, when, when there is a fissure or a crack among us as Zimbabweans, it's very easy for our enemies to penetrate. So I believe that we are nearer to the solution than we, we are able to realize. But we just need to be patient as a people. That's what I can encourage my fellow Zimbabweans, that let us pray for our country, let us pray for those who are in leadership. Let us be hopeful. You know, let us be hopeful. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, as a nation, we are going forward. The United States of America that we admire so much, it took them hundreds of years. It took them more than 100 years to, to resolve some of the problems that were troubling them. There was slavery for, for many years in the United States of America, even though they were professing with their lips uh, you know, liberty, equality, and fraternity. We know black people were oppressed up to the 1960s, and they still continue to be oppressed. There's still a lot to do in the United States of America. The journey to, to, to construct and reconstruct a country, I don't think it can be a journey of 20 years or just 30 years. It's something which we have to do for posterity, which we have to do for future generations. <laughs>